We're out here in Lake Michigan. We got a little bit of a gale coming through. We're fighting our first fish of the day, and I'm curious to see how big he is. First fish of the day, local fish, native fish here, the lake trout. And the lake trout bite has actually been really good. We're running our two cannon optimums on bottom. Everything else is suspended looking for salmon. We're kind of past the four-year-old bite. Now we're picking up a lot of two and three-year-olds that are coming up along the harbor area right here. We have probably a king salmon. I hope he's still there on the high diver. Go yeah, ahead, Pete. Yeah, bring him. Okay. No, he's, he's coming at us, Pete. Hopefully he's coming at us. This bit on one of these alternate techniques that I was talking about. Uh, this is uh, likely a salmon. Came on what we call a high diver. Diver rods take your bait down and off to the side. We keep them in place in the cannon rod holder over here. Keep him coming, Pete. Sure. Got it. Rod tip up. Nice. Yeah. Three-year-old king. Hello, gorgeous. Welcome to my party. <laughs> so we're in the fall, getting towards the end of our season, and a lot of our salmon have ran up the river. We're still finding a few, and the trout bite has been really good, so much so that we're targeting them just with the Canon Optimum. We're in 132 feet of water, but because of the motion of the boat, between, we've got what's called blowback, pushes the cable back. So to get to bottom, I've got 214 feet out. I'm running a 16 pound cannon weight here. These cannon optimums can handle it. Going down's easy, coming back up's a challenge, not for this setup. And the nice thing I also like is that I can I can do what's called a slow start. It goes down fast, but I can just feather it to make sure she's tapping bottom just right where the lake trout live. What's going on, Nick? We caught one pulling lines. We're yeah. cat. We're fighting one pulling lines. Excuse me. He's not caught till he's caught. I'm good. Keep him coming. <clears throat> he's perfect size for the pan, Nick. Catching the net, release into the grease. Well, folks, trip got cut a little short today. We had caught the fish, had some fun, but Mother Nature just wasn't gonna cooperate with us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the time to show you how and why we rig up our salmon boats the way we do. We've got three boats here. They're rigged up differently, yet they're the same because we've got a few rules that we follow after 40 plus years of fishing Lake Michigan and three generations. Let me show them to you. The heart of any salmon fishing boat begins and ends with the downriggers. We run Canon Optimums, we run three per boat, and you'll notice that our, ours on our sides, our outdowns, if you will, are not mounted in the corners. They're mounted halfway up or most of the way up the gunnel, up and out of the way so that our crew has plenty of room to work. On our Canon Optimums, we're running the 16 pound cannonball because we know that these downriggers can take it. The other thing that we're doing is that we are running these additional rod holders, bat wings as they're nicknamed, this one and this one will serve as an extra rod holder so that if we have to move the rods, we can. And the ones that we keep towards the back of the boat, we keep them fishing. So moving up the gunnel, the next thing that we have is that on two of these boats, we have these diver rod holders on a quick slide. We have them off for the customers to come on board. When we're going down the river, it slides on, and then we're ready to go fishing. The other thing that we insist on is that the diver rod holders, must be a ratcheting rod holder. You'll notice on the arch that we've got as many rod holders as the arch would physically allow. We even added a piece of track on Captain Dave's boat to get an extra rod holder off each side. On my boat, my boat came with rod holders, but I added these cannons right here so that I can put extra rods up, up out of the way, off the, nothing's laying on the deck, nothing's across the back gunnel, it's up and out of the way. And the other thing that we did is that we loaded it up with LED lighting so that we can just flood the back of the boat for those 4 a.m. start times. We've run a lot of different graphs over the years. What we're currently running is Hummingbird. They're a part of the one boat network. This unit is networked to this unit, 
it allows me to control that radar or that other unit from this graph. It allows me to control my downriggers and it talks to the fish hawk and all this information will read out from the downriggers at the back of the boat. One other thing that all of our boats have got is a wash down system. You've got to have a wash down system. You've got to keep your boat clean, keep the blood off, keep the slime off, keeps the flies off. And as my wife would say, a clean fishing boat is a mean fishing boat. The other thing we've done on these boats is that we put this flooring down. It gives it a nice grip for you to walk around on. It's easier on your feet, a little more cushy. And unlike Bon Jovi, it is not slippery when wet. So after many decades of fishing, the only thing we really haven't figured out is a great spot to put the net. But if you find a spot, please don't hesitate to let us know. But otherwise, this is our layout. This is our setup. This is how we do things here at Best Chance 2 Charters. I'm Captain Hunter. This is my beloved wife, Captain Holly. And we'll see you next time on Midwest Outdoors.